welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, this is Paul Neighbour and John Bolton doing some Parallel Project Training podcasts on the APM Project Management Qualification, formerly known as the APMP. We are up to issue management. So, um, oh, distinguish between an issue Deep joy. and a risk. <laughs> I just, sorry, sometimes when I worked on projects, people go, that's not a risk, that's an issue. I go, oh, God. Now you're being really enough. Anyway, distinguish between a risk and an issue and explain the benefits of the escalation process. So, um, an issue is a. It's something, what should it be, a definition actually? Yes, whether tolerances of delegated work are predicted to be exceeded or have ex- been exceeded. So there's an issue, something that's going to cause, that is causing us problems. Yeah, so you're off plan basically. You're off plan by a significant amount. By more, an amount more than tolerance. More than tolerance. Yeah, yeah. So you need to be able to escalate that up. Mm. I mean, what does that mean in practice though? I mean, that's a fairly d- 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 obscure definition, isn't it? You know? What does that mean? I think it's something that you need to make the senior people aware of. You think you're going to overspend. Yes. Or you think late. you're going to be late. Or you think that you're not going to be able to deliver what you're supposed to be delivering. That's what it means. Yes. Isn't it? As a result of the issue. But I think there's other issues. I don't, I, I don't think it's limited to that. I think if, if there's a danger that you are going to upset a major stakeholder group because of yes. the, the project. Yes. That's yes. an issue. Yes. It's got nothing to do with tolerance. Yes. Yes. Um, and you've got things like... So you, you would put the f- emphasis on escalation rather than tolerance. Yeah, but I think the point that they're trying to make here is there has to be something against which you've got an issue. So there has to be a predetermined boundary beyond which you're going mm-hmm. to gonna, gonna go. Mm-hmm. But if you had like, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to um, alienate the neighbours or something and you think that that's a problem, what are you going to do about it? Because it doesn't fall in that definition. You, you know, it's not an issue. Yes. Of course yes. it's an issue. Yes, it is an know. issue, yes. So I think you just need to be a bit sensible about all this. Yes, okay. Um, so the point is, for the exam, the issues are significant things that need escalation uh, outside of tolerance. Yes, that used to be the case. Yes. An exactly. issue used to be something that the project manager couldn't deal with. Yes. But what they're saying now is the project manager can deal with it as long as it's intolerance. Formal issue occurs when the tolerance of the delegated work predicted has exceeded, or is it going to exceed? exceed. Yeah. So if your tolerance is twenty percent either way of the budget, so you're outside of tolerance, you've got an issue. Yeah, but if it's one percent or zero percent, you don't have an issue. Yeah, Yeah. that's right. That's right. So there's just they've just finessed the definition a bit, but so I think basically it's it's something (laughs) that something has gone wrong, something Something that's actually happened. A risk has matured, I did, you know, possibly a risk has matured, um, or something that we'd never predicted has happened that, that has got 100% probability associated with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we need to do something about it. And, and basically what needs to happen is it's escalated. Via a process defined via, via in a defined the process, issue management plan. plan. So yeah, it's like the risk management plan. Mm, so mm, it defines mm. roles and responsibilities, process, right. objectives. Yeah, yeah. But they're not asking for, uh, within the assessment criteria, they're not asking for the contents of an issue management no. plan. No, no, no. What they're, what they're saying is that if you've got an issue, it is escalated. Yes. What they're not saying is who you escalate it to. No. I mean, escalation to me is upwards. To the sponsor. Um, but that's the only person in the model. Yes. So everything has to go to the sponsor. Yes. I, I don't know. Let's you, not critique the um, body of knowledge. Sorry. <laughs> Let's just stick with the, what it says it is. <laughs> okay, so you escalate it to the sponsor. You escalate it to Happy the sponsor. Happy job yes, done. Yes, all the right, steering okay. group. Job done, move on. Mm. Does that mean the team can't have issues? No, they can. Okay. So they raise them, put them on the issue log. And then the project manager has to assess them and decide whether they're issues or not. Yes. They're not issues at that point. Because it's only him or, no, if they're, or her that will know no, if they're outside tolerance. Yes. Yes. So they have a problem log. 
until it's an issue. Concerns log or something. Right, okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Down this way lies madness. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. So we create an issue log that just tracks the issues through. That's right. I can understand why we're doing this. And the reason we're doing this is sometimes if you say issues or anything that may affect the project outcome, which is a definition that used to exist, yes, then the issue log becomes the day-to-day okay. management of the project. Everything okay. is an issue. Okay. And and so the, the system just gets swamped. Yeah. So, so you, you, it, just, it just encourages to differentiate between the important things and non-important that's things. That's right. So an issue, something that's on this issue log is, yeah. is significant so, and needs addressing. And I mean, the benefits of, of issue management really is making sure that if, I mean, things if unattended, they fester. Yes. And they just slowly grow in number yes. and build up to be a big problem. And then you just get submerged in it all. Helps communication with stakeholders. Mm. That's what you said. That's right. So if you raise an issue, it helps know, because you've got a process, they, they're they confident that you're dealing with it. Yes. They, they've got feedback and all that sort of thing. Um, so it, and it, and it gives an excuse or a reason for drawing down contingencies because mm-hmm. a risk turns into an issue, which means that's you right. need contingency so money to deal with it. So if allocated the budget to that risk. That's then. right. So it justifies the contingency spend. Uh-huh. Um, it's got clear hierarchy, so people know what their role is in the process. So yes. they're quite clear on what they're expecting. And then you can to allocate do. an owner to each issue, who can then take that issue forward. Yeah. Okay. So you can. Uh, There's usually a lot of chat about owners and who's the owner of an issue. Oh, why? Well, who's the owner of an issue? Uh, the person best able to manage it. Okay, but you've escalated the sponsor. So it's quite often the sponsor. Yeah, but it can only be the sponsor or the steering group. Because they're the only ones you can... Anyway, let's, yes. right, let's carry on. Yes. So yeah. usually when, when we have a go at filling in these um, issue logs, you end up with a sponsor in every... every yeah. uh, Only in every I'm, issue. I don't think that's the intention. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. I don't... And that, my experience of issue logs on projects in real life is not, not the sponsor. The sponsor. <laughs> Anybody but. Anybody fact. but the sponsor. Mm. Yes. Okay. Anyway, that's what they say. Great. Questions, so typical questions. Describe the headings. List the headings on a log. Describe give, give us a couple of entries. Describe why it's important. Yeah. Describe. Yeah. Descri- yeah, that's right. Describe the, 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 the main benefits think, of. So this is a state. Distinguish between issues and risks is a good example of a state. Oh, what a right state. Yeah. <laughs> state <laughs> the difference between an issue and a risk. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. A okay. state question. Well, it actually says distinguish between. Yes, between issues and risks. Uh, I could imagine that being an example, explain question. Uh, there's enough meat in that. Explain five key differences between risks and issues. Oh, God, five. Yeah, it'd be hard, wouldn't it? No, I think... Yeah, it's probably it's, a state. It's yeah, a okay. state. A risk is state, not state the, the State the key difference between, project, yeah. yeah. Whereas an issue is... Yeah. And then explain four key benefits of an escalation. Risk process. That's the, that's the only question they can ask, isn't it? It is, isn't it, based on these <laughs> assessment criteria. I'm sure... Um, <laughs> Nailed it there. <laughs> yeah, saw it. I'm sure they'll think of five other ones. Yeah, great. Thank you, John. Right. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com.